Ladies and gentlemen, coming up, we have stories about Santa Claus, cheating exes, bio children, and crazy mother-in-laws telling your wife not to talk. Seems like a great idea. A child calling their parent ugly. The most petty story ever, throwing out leftovers and unsuspecting relationships. Stay tuned because these stories were handpicked by Candy Thunder. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one is, am I the astronaut for telling my overly sheltered niece that Santa isn't real? My sister Ray, female 42, was trying to have a kid for a long time but struggled with infertility. After years of trying and money spent on fertility clinics, she finally had a miracle baby, Sue, now female 12. Since Ray and her husband view Sue's existence as a miracle, they treat her as one. From the time she could vocalize her wants, she got everything she wanted. As a result, Sue is kind of a nightmare. Whenever our family gets together, we have to do whatever she wants. We have to eat whatever she wants to eat, watch whatever movies she wants to watch, and we can't do anything outside, even though the rest of the family loves the outdoors, because Sue hates nature and will literally scream if she gets so much as a speck of dirt on her shoe. We had to stop doing Christmas together because she would throw tantrums if my kid got something she wanted. This kid's muffin, but worse, worse than muffin. I keep telling Ray that she is only setting Sue up for failure by spoiling her. Sue has no friends at her school because she doesn't understand that other kids aren't going to give her whatever she wants because they don't see her as a miracle the way her parents do. She also has a bunch of mannerisms that other kids that age grew out of years ago. She still picks her nose in public, still whines and whimpers when things don't go her way, still shops at Justice, and still believes in Santa and the Easter Bunny. Ray won't listen to me and says that I should let kids be kids, ignoring the fact that Sue will be a teenager soon. Well, she's 12, right? Yeah. 12. Last weekend, we were all gathered at my parents' house and Sue was writing a letter to Santa like she did every year. Of course, it was pages and pages long with a list of the most outrageous things a 12-year-old could think of. I wasn't planning on saying anything, I never do, but one day while Ray was away, Sue and my son, Finn, male 9, came running to me. Sue clearly had been crying and Finn looked rather smug. They both asked me if Santa was real. Normally, Sue would never ask me to resolve issues, but her parents weren't there, and I wasn't going to coddle her the way her parents did. I said Santa wasn't real. The minute Ray got home, Sue ran to her crying and screaming that I told her Santa wasn't real. Ray tried to calm her down and told her of course Santa was real and I was lying. When Ray put Sue down for a nap, yes, you read that right, Ray put her 12-year-old daughter Sue down for a nap, she scolded me. She said that I had no business trying to parent her child. I then told her that she wasn't parenting her child, so someone had to. Maybe the first step to self-awareness for her is learning Santa isn't real. I was hoping Ray would wake up and see the reality of the situation, but now she's just ignoring my text and calls. When I told my husband about everything, he wasn't as supportive as I thought he would be. He agrees that Sue is unbearable, but it's not my place to fix that. And what I did probably did more harm than good. Should I have just said Santa was real and not gotten involved in this situation? Ooh. Original question is, am I the astronaut for telling my overly sheltered niece that Santa isn't real? Interesting. This is tough, and I don't know that there's like a... Again, whenever whenever I'm giving answers, I'm, I'm giving what I think, right? Um, I mean, everyone else has their own, their own classification that they're going to give someone here. There are obviously some big problems going on here. Nothing was said about Sue having any kind of developmental issues or, um, or spectrum issues. She wasn't... Uh, nothing was said here about her... her having anything that would explain any part of the behaviors that have been developed and it does sound like this is just a straight nurturing her into being uh being spoiled and babying her for way too long that sounds like where we're at if it is because of something else it is a different story because this is what's been laid in front of us we're going to assume that this is the case and she's just been nurtured into this behavior and yeah that's that's a big problem and yeah her parents aren't doing her any favor any favors at all when you see situations like this when i see situations like this i kind of 
share Opie's sentiment that the real world is going to be a shock for this kid. Like a huge shock. She's 12. And at 12, it's not just Santa. San- this, this isn't about Santa right? I think in this specific situation, I don't think OP is the asshole because they came and asked her. Now, if it was just Sue, if it was just Sue that came up and asked this question and it was, it was OP, it was just OP telling Sue directly, yes or no. Yes. Would, would have been the asshole for that, but it was Sue and her child who's nine. Did I read that right? Nine. It was Sue and her child. So either she had to contradict herself, contradict her own parenting in front of her own child and disagree with the truth that had already been provided to her own child or tell the truth because she had already told her child that. Again, I think it's because it was two children from two different families. That's what complicates the issue here. The fact that OP did it just to burst that bubble a little bit. Maybe, 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 maybe. Let's take a look and think about it here. Again, uh, the ask on scale, ask on four is you could have done that differently as Ask on three is you should have done that differently. Ask on two is definitely shouldn't have done that. Ask on one is you're a terrible human. I don't, this is not a terrible human kind of thing to do. Um, I don't think this is a definitely should have done it. It is maybe a three should have done it differently or, or could have done it differently. I don't think it's a definitely because OP's kid was there asking the question too. And yeah, OP's kid had a smug, a smug face. So, I mean, the nine year old has it figured out and it's like, dude, I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is to this. I really don't. Overall, overall, because they did it to just to burst the bubble a little bit. I think we have an everyone sucks here combination. I don't think the OP is very much of an asshole at all because again, in, in its purest form, her own kid kid was asking here too and she had to be consistent with what she had how she had parented her child before sue just happened to be there so yeah it's not op's job to parent her child i don't think she was trying to i think her kid and sue came and asked a question she answered it consistent with the answers that she had given her own child before and had she left it at that had op left it at that it would be an nta but she didn't she put it in the context of her being a spoiled little shit and said "Uh, i did it to parent your child because you don't parent them somebody had to and that's where they become a little bit of an asshole so it's an everyone sucks here for sure how big of an asshole OP was is is debatable. Could have said, go ask your mom. Yeah. And then pulled her kid aside and had a different conversation and be like, look, this is drama. We don't want to get into this. Trust me. It's not going to end well. Sue ended up the way she is for a reason. It wasn't worth the drama that it caused. That's for sure. Hey, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you, and this one is titled, Am I the Askinaut for Refusing to Let My Ex's Stepchildren Join My Kids and I for Some Family Traditions? My Ex's Stepchildren. My ex, 33 female, and I, 33 male, share three children. Alana, 10, Jonah, 8, and Callum, 7. My ex cheated on me two years ago and left to be with her affair partner who is now her husband. She and I share custody of our children 50-50 timeshare. While they have full custody of her husband's two children from his previous marriage, that ended with the affair as well. I was always an active dad in our kids' lives and we had our own little traditions from baking brownies the day before they go back to school and having a little brownie party to baking cookies for their birthdays and letting the birthday kid pick what kind we make, to doing a group photo for Halloween every year with our costumes and doing silly faces, and our Christmas shopping day where I take the kids and we make a day out of buying the gifts. We go out to eat, get photos taken, sing Christmas songs in the car, etc. They may not be the most traditional traditions. They may not be the most traditional traditions around, but I have done this for years with the kids. My ex asked our kids if we still did those things recently, and they said yes. She then told me I should include her stepkids in these sometimes because our three are bonding during these experiences and are coming together as a group that doesn't include their step siblings. And since her stepkids are not going to know our kids as step siblings, but will only know them as siblings because of the age and the fact that they were always with my ex and their dad, It would be cruel to let them be frozen out like that when I could help the bond. I told my ex I did not want to include her stepkids. I said she could come up with traditions for them to do as a family unit if she wants, but I am not going to be more involved with her cheating ass or her affair partner than I need to be. I told her being civil for the kids is the best we can ever be, and there's no way I want to take responsibility or bond with her stepkids. She called me an ass and said that I am putting my feelings before those of two young kids. She said it won't bother our kids at all because they'll always see the stepkids as interlopers, but two little kids will always feel othered 
and it will be my fault because I'm a dick. She also accused me of being gleeful about the pain of kids. This is not true at all. But she thinks that my having this boundary is me rubbing my hands together like a cartoon villain. Am I the ass Uh, Interesting. Okay, so Candy Thunder actually left us a thought here. Your wife cheated on you and then left you and split your family. And now your ex-wife wants you to help create traditions for her new stepchildren. You are not the asshole, but your ex-wife for sure is. Please protect your mental health and do not change your mind. Um, yeah, I, I definitely see that angle. Definitely see it. The other thing that, uh, that I see here is when these people cheated and split their relationship apart and decided to start a new family. The blended family that they started is their responsibility. It is not OP's responsibility in any way, shape, or form here. The ex is trying to force her new blended family upon OP, which is horse shit. You don't get to do that. You don't get to do that, especially if this blended family got created because you cheated on your partner. And this is the person that you cheated with. That is extremely insensitive, extremely insensitive. But even if it was something that had been an amicable split and and they were apart for years and then she found somebody and then this blended family started, even then, it doesn't matter how that came together. This blended family was her choice. It is her responsibility. She does not get to force it on anyone. And she has to accept that her kids now have a life outside of her home with their other parent. That may be part of this. This may be her trying to 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 manipulate some control over them while they're with dad. It may be her still trying to control things a little bit. Or it could be her being lazy and just saying, hey, look, it's easier if 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 you take them to do these things, then we don't have to think of new things to do with them. It's an unreasonable ask. An extremely unreasonable ask. Ex-wife is the asshole. OP. NTA here. NTA for OP. Ex-wife. I do want to classify her here because I feel like we need to. It's, it's way too big of an ask. It's insensitive. This was her choice. And then she tried to use the fact that they're young children against him to make him out to be the villain. Can't imagine why they ever had problems. <sighs> Where do we think? Where do we think the ex lands here? I think the ex is at least a two. But doing this when it was the guy she cheated with, his kids, and then forcing, trying to force them on her ex that she cheated on, and then making him out to be a big, I was going to say, yeah, making him out to be the villain because he won't do it. She's going to take a trip all the way to ask on one. That's a terrible thing to do. That is a completely insensitive, terrible thing to do. That is, I am going to walk all over you, stomp on you, and then I'm going to walk away, and then I'm going to walk back and try to stomp on you a couple more times. Hell no. These are healthy boundaries to have, and she has to accept that her kids have two different families now they have two different homes they're going to have like op if you ever moved on and you you met someone who had kids they would have siblings in your house that aren't going to blend with the siblings from their other house it will be two separate families blended families are complicated it is not easy at all but if you were all one big happy freaking kumbaya family and everybody was friends and everybody wanted this to happen there is a way that it could happen i'm sure some families out there make it work but you can't force this on another human especially one that you've already wronged and then show no remorse for it and make them out to be the bad guy. No. The audacity. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again with another Reddit story for you. This one actually has a couple of updates. So pop the popcorn, strap yourselves in. Title of this one is, Am I the Astronaut for Lying to My Family About My Daughter? Originally posted March 7th of this year. I, 30 male, am in a relationship with my wife, 29 female, and we have been together for eight years, but we grew up together and were friends from elementary. I also have two children, four female, who we can call Chloe, fake name, and a baby boy, five months. Around five and a half years ago, one of our best friends passed away from cancer. We had known him since we were nine, so this hit us both hard. During this time, we argued a lot and we spent time away from each other, but eventually figured things out and realized we were better together. Maybe two weeks after we got back together, she told me that during our time apart, she was with another man who happened to be someone who we were both friends with in high school who we can call Jonah for the sake of the story. Now, it was a bit upsetting at first, but after some discussion, we were able to accept it and move on. Another two weeks or so passed by and we find out she is pregnant. 
this just got complicated. I know Ava isn't mine. I've known from the start and have accepted that fact. But I love her. She's my daughter and nothing will change. When I looked into my daughter's eyes for the first time, it was heartbreaking to see the face of a man that I considered my friend for all those years. But I didn't tell anyone, not even my wife, until Ava was two years old. When I confronted her about it, she admitted that was her fear because Ava honestly looks like a carbon copy of Jonah. She asked if I wanted a paternity test and I denied because I really am scared I could lose legal rights to my baby girl. The past four years, she's been my girl. I love her more than words can describe, and I got over that heartbreak so quickly. I love her and my son equally. Here's where the issues start. Oh, they're just now starting? Ever since my son was born, my family has started to question my daughter's biology as my son just looks like my wife, whereas my daughter looks nothing like either of us. My mom recently came up to me and said, I need to do a paternity test for Ava as I can't have my boy raising a baby that isn't his. This really upset me, but I kept my cool and I just told my mom that Ava is my daughter. Also, for uh, for uh, for mother-in-law's comment here. I never told her in the first place because she treats my stepsister, stepson like crap and I don't want my girl to be treated like that. That's why. Well, my mom was committed and went to my wife and managed to trick her into telling the truth. She came back over to me and yelled at me for raising an illegitimate child. We left the situation fast, but my mom hasn't stopped texting me about how I lied for four years and that my wife is a cheater. Munch. Mind your business, ma. I explained to everyone after in a calm way that my wife didn't cheat and just went into a bit more depth. While my other family besides my mom don't care that she isn't mine, they are upset at me for keeping the information away for so long. But I personally think it was none of their business in the first place as my own daughter doesn't even know. So... Am I the Askinaut? Edit, no, Jonah has no idea about her. He's not a safe person. He has another child who I saw on his cousin's Facebook. Jonah blocked us after my wife and I got back together, but he lived in my town for another three years, so I heard news about him. <sighs> Due to this sub's rules, I can't say what, but he's a very bad man from what I know, which is why our friendship broke. He did stuff which should have absolutely put him away for life, but he isn't. He said stuff about children, which absolutely deserves jail time for life. Oh, dear God, okay. I fear for his child, but I'm not putting my daughter in a situation where she could be badly hurt. I tried to keep it low-key in my post and comments about him, but it's not possible to do that anymore, as I would just seem like a selfish uh, astronaut if I don't explain. It's all for my daughter's safety. Okay, before we move to the update here, I, we, we, know how, we know how mother-in-law here, or Opie's mom, would would treat her even if this was just a just purely a blended family if he had got with his wife and she had a child she would treat that child like shit because that's what that's what she's doing to his sister's stepkid like what blood doesn't determine who your family is she's taking the malfoy route here like she's taking that they have to be pure bloods within our family to be able to be with us to be able to celebrate holidays to be able to do anything to be able to eat dinner or just going to treat them like shit i wouldn't tell her either and yeah it's nobody's damn business it's your business and your wife's <sighs> okay we've got an update to read here update july 25th four months later she's four she's young if you read my other post you will see that she isn't biologically my daughter she is my ex best friends but i've loved her since day one nothing can change that my family had an issue with this, but I cut them off. I knew in my other post I said nobody else cared, but it turned into a bigger deal because of my mom. Shocking. The only people I have kept in contact with is my sister, one of them. She has always supported me, and even since she found out about Ava's biology, she hasn't cared and still loves my daughter the same as she loves my son. My kids stay the night with her one night, and a few hours after my kids arrived, I got a text from my sister saying my mom is there. She showed up unexpectedly. Oh, shit. My mom knows I don't want her around my kids, so I drive to collect my kids and thank my sister for telling me. When I get there, I find my sister angry and holding my sobbing daughter. My son is in my mother's lap. I leave without sparing a look at my mother apart from when I took my son from her. When we get home, my daughter was still crying. I picked her up and cuddled her super close and asked what happened. She looks me in the eyes and says, Grandma says you're not my real daddy. I want you to be my real daddy. I don't want you to love baby brother more than me. What a bitch biscuit. What the fuck is this woman doing? You know she got off on that too. She got, what the hell is wrong with this woman? To intentionally show up there just to cause this four-year-old girl pain like that. Red flags. Flying her straight to ask on one right now. Never talk to this woman again. She is a human piece of garbage. And if anybody who has your children at the time lets her into the house... I'm sorry, but they have to be cut off too. I know it's not your sister's fault, but she made the choice to let her into the house. Don't. 
That's the rule. She doesn't get to be around your kids ever. And inflicting trauma on this girl for fun. I think at this point, lying would do her more harm in the future. So I sat her down and explained that I'm her real daddy because I love her and raised her. I just didn't help make her. She was confused and asked if I made her baby brother. I didn't lie and said yes. I also explained how I love them both equally. The fact that I didn't make her doesn't change that. I hated seeing her little heart break. But lying more would have hurt her more. She clings to things. Information. Now every night at bed she asks me, Daddy, you still love me like you love baby brother's name, right? It's like she's scared I don't love her the same because my mom said I love my son more because he is mine. <sighs> I love her just as much as I love him. I don't come on Reddit much, but I'm really just lost here. I know telling her the truth would save her a lot of future trust issues and stuff, but it breaks my heart to think that she thinks I don't love her the same as the baby. My plan was to tell her when she's older, but she's at the age now where there is a chance she will remember this. Edit, I want to add that Bio Dad doesn't know. He's a dangerous man, I, I, and I wouldn't ever trust him around my kid. He would try to get custody, and neither my wife or I would trust him around our daughter. She needs to be protected. I was under the impression she was mine, but I knew from day one she wasn't. I confronted my wife when my kid was two. Extra info, feel free to ask questions. If you really think BioDead should know, PM me and I will tell you why he shouldn't be able to ever get near her. I'm not going to say here because it seems too much for Reddit. If that's your issue, then just speak directly to me. You have to be a really miserable person miserable with yourself to do that to a four-year-old and it wasn't her choice to make that was not her choice another update august 19th one month later so we had some amazing suggestions and i want to thank everyone who offered good advice for me and my little girl we used the idea of legos and building blocks she has a favorite bunny teddy that she sleeps with all the time literally all day every day we see bunny so what i did was sit down on a mat where we had a daddy daughter challenge thing she got me to make a structure of her mommy and i got her to make one of her bunny by the end of it she made her bunny so now i put up in front of her the real bunny and the lego bunny I asked her which one she loved more, and she obviously said her teddy bunny, and I asked her why. She said, because it's my bunny and I had it forever. So I made it a point to say that the bunny is like her. I've loved her forever and that she's so special to me, and I love her so much that she couldn't be replaced even though I didn't make her. Just because she didn't make the bunny doesn't mean she doesn't love it. I used a similar example, but in a different way, to explain to her about her baby brother, by the way. It satisfied her, and she is happy with that example. We use the term now, I love you like you love bunny. Obviously, it's a silly little term, but it helps her understand it so much better. OP also noted in comments that he would cut contact, or they did cut contact with his mother completely. He also notes that many other family members cut contact with his mom as well for what she did to OP and his daughter. Well, I'm glad that the other family members started to come along, but the fact that they sided with, with Grandma, Crazy Mom, that's what we'll call her. She actually... She destroyed that privilege whenever she did what she did. I don't understand how someone could be this cruel to a four-year-old. What did she? What did she think she was going to accomplish here? What, what did she think she was going to accomplish? Did she think that the four-year-old was going to be like, well, shit, I guess I'm done. I'm going to go pack a bag and run away. It's just going to cause pain. I want to cause pain. That's what she wanted to do. And take her there again, because this is a shit human being, ladies and gentlemen just a shit human being. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again with another Reddit story for you. This one is actually from the marriage subreddit and it is titled, My Wife Won't Talk to Me Anymore. My wife, 31 female, and I, 46 male, have been together for six years, married for two. She used to talk to me all the time. She used to share her day with me, just randomly tell me her thoughts, stuff like that. However, she also used to want to talk about problems we were having a lot. It felt like we were always talking about what I did wrong. She thought I spent too much time talking to exes. We were friends. I don't prioritize her over work. It's my career, am I supposed to quit? And mostly that I didn't care enough about her. It was so many different ways that she came to that conclusion, but it was like we were always just sitting down for a serious talk. So I told her about a year ago that I didn't want to talk anymore. It's a good idea. So I told her about a year ago that I didn't want to talk anymore. I was just tired of hearing everything I was doing wrong. I provide everything we need. Can I just have a break? I told her that if she had a problem with the way I did things, then she could get out of my house and we'd get a divorce. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do this right now. 
She told me that she was trying to communicate because she didn't feel appreciated and that I had one foot out the door. But I think that's ridiculous. I know it's harsh, but I was at my wit's end. So now a year later, she barely talks to me at all. When I ask her about her day, she says, fine. When I talk to her about work or politics or my day, she says, oh, wow, cool, and walks away. Her attitude isn't bad. She's very sweet, but it's just like she doesn't care anymore. I didn't want to talk about her problems anymore, but I didn't mean stop talking, period. We really don't talk about anything that doesn't have to do with our life or household. In the evenings, she just turns on the TV and we watch something until bed. Now, I don't know what to do because I just found out today that she won a pretty big award at her job and she didn't tell me. Last Friday, she said she had to work late and it was cool. I didn't ask. Today, I found out that she was really at a dinner where she was celebrated for this award. She invited some of her friends and her mom and her brothers. I ran into her brother at the store today and he mentioned the dinner and said that he was sorry I couldn't make it. I asked what he meant and he said at the dinner how I wasn't able to go because I was sick. I asked him to explain the whole thing to me, so now he knows too. What am I supposed to do? Is she punishing me or something? Do I tell her that I know? Why wouldn't she tell me? I didn't think she'd take it this far, and now I'm thinking she's being petty. Does anyone have experience here? I love my wife, and I'd do anything for her, but I'm so confused. Edit, wow, a lot of comments. A couple people are asking about the exes. I have close contact with three of my exes. Oh, wait, he says, have. Wife brought up an issue with this. I would expect to see a had. But it's have close contact with three of my exes. My previous wife calls me when she needs to talk. Her and her husband don't get along. I have two ex-girlfriends who I'm still friends with, and I was friends with them when I met my wife now. My wife doesn't like them because she says they cross boundaries, but honest to God, they are just friendly and we ended in good terms. It's nothing serious, and I just don't want to give my friends up. Edit 2, you're right. Tried to talk to her last night. It didn't go well. I'll update later when I can get my thoughts together. Okay, uh, so we don't have that update yet. We'll be watching for that update. But uh, <laughs> what do you expect, bro? You're like, I don't want to talk anymore. Why won't my wife talk to me? Here's the thing. I think the the default like knee-jerk pride based response can be like oh, it's just problems i just i just I, I can't just hear about problems i can't just keep hearing about problems the problem 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 i provide everything we do shouldn't that be good enough no no i mean that's not a relationship being a provider alone isn't a relationship and here's here's the direction that you have to start thinking about whenever it comes to problems and your spouse or partner presenting problems to you i think in the beginning of a marriage it can be tough whenever you start learning these things that your spouse has a problem with but eventually if you start to look at it as i can't fix it until i know what's wrong i can't provide a solution until i know what the root of the problem is i can't be aware of all things until they're brought to my attention and if it's something that's a big enough deal for your partner to be bothered by enough to bring up to you it's worth you noting it's worth you being aware of it's worth making the adjustment in some cases or it just requires a further explanation it requires a conversation to get through the needed change whether that's on your end or hers something has to change if there's a problem i'm not saying everything's your fault and you have to change who you are and you have to change all your behaviors no but if you want to have a successful marriage you need to be aware of problems so that you can together find a solution to them i've got blinders on almost all the time i'm task driven my calendar is full all the time i am running 100 miles an hour most of the time in and chances are if there's something that I do unknowingly that that causes a problem, I'm not going to know it unless it's brought to my attention. And this brozo is just like, no, I just want to do my thing. I just want to I want to do me. I want to choose me all the time. I don't want you to bring your bullshit to me. I don't want to hear about your feelings. I don't want to hear about how our relationship can be better. I just want to I want to work. I want to do my thing. And I don't want to I don't want to I want to have serious conversations. I don't I don't want to know about problems. It's not a marriage. It's not how it works, man. It's like he basically just wanted to work and do his thing and then just have her there for convenience, but not have her have like feelings and opinions or anything like that. Just just be there. And maybe she's taking it to an extreme here because she's trying to prove a point or maybe she felt discarded and uncared for because all of those concerns that she brought up, he's like, I, I don't I don't care. So, wow, 
The fact that she actually now feels and has adjusted to those things just being that way, that she feels like you don't you don't care and you have one foot out the door and you don't want to hear about anything and you just don't give a shit. Those problems never get solved. And this is the aftermath of it. Also, also, how freaking hypocritical is this? It's fantastic how hypocritical this is because he's like, well, it seems like she just doesn't care. It seems like she's got one foot out the door. She just won't talk to me. It's just we're... <laughs> Does any of this sound familiar, dude? How funny is this? That you now have the problems that your wife had before and tried to talk to you about, but you're like, nah. How big of a self-fulfilling prophecy can you be, sir? Continuing present course, ignoring the damage that's being caused, and then sometime later, where did all this damage come from? I don't understand. Dumbass. It's it's a teeter-totter between Ask on 1 and Ask on 2 here. I'm going to give him 2 because I don't think he's evil. I think he's an idiot. And I think this is redeemable because he has to start solving problems. But he's put himself in a position now to where the damage, so much damage has been caused. It might be irreversible, but she's still there. That's the part I don't get. She's still there. Not sure why. Because she's excluded him from everything. So either it's, it's because, you know, change is scary and she's just grown into She's found comfort in this darkness. I don't I don't understand that part. But but because she's still there and because he's an idiot and I don't think evil, it may be fixable. However, he's got a shit ton of work to do because he's let it go on for so long and just not giving a shit. Step one, start giving a shit. Step two, start having those conversations and let her tell you all the things that are actually bothering her so that you can start figuring out solutions. Doesn't mean you're wrong on everything, although your mindset to this point kind of leads us in that direction. But I'm saying as a blanket statement it doesn't mean that you're wrong about everything it means there's a problem that needs to be solved somehow you can't just ignore them they will not get better on their own Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again with another Reddit story for you. This one is titled, Am I the Askonaut for being offended that my daughter called me ugly? This isn't a big deal, but I feel like I'm going crazy over it. Yesterday at dinner, my daughter, 15 female, was telling my wife, 40 female, and I, 45 male, about a guy she likes in school, and she thinks he likes her back. My wife and I were happy for her, and I would support her liking anyone that treats her right and makes her happy. She was telling us how he's smart, funny, and has a great six-pack. I'm used to the girl talk. My wife laughed and said something along the lines of, as long as he's a good person, my daughter replied, well, yeah, but looks are also important. I don't want to end up with somebody like daddy. I asked her what she meant by that. I don't remember her exact words, but it was along the lines of that I'm round, bald, and short. There was no immediate just kidding from her. I told her that wasn't a nice thing to say and that she should apologize. Before she said anything, though, my wife chimed in teasing that guys were always so sensitive. My daughter laughed. I usually would immediately address this kind of situation, but I was pretty upset and didn't want to scream or cry. I know that's so lame. I stayed mostly silent for the rest of dinner. Bit of background, I've recently been feeling more self-conscious. I'm not ugly. Even if I was, I have other qualities to make up for it. And I know that my wife adores me, but I've definitely noticeably gained some weight and lost some hair. My wife is as stunning and youthful as the day I met her. And my daughter is the spitting image of her. However, I have a feeling that if my daughter insulted her appearance, she would be very offended and expect me to back her up. Before bed, I addressed the issue with my wife. I explained that it hurt my feelings and that I want to teach my daughter to be kind to others and that it would mean a lot if we could both talk to my daughter about why saying that was not right. My wife didn't take me seriously at all. Among the things she said was that the best way to make someone stop teasing you is to ignore it. I don't want to treat my daughter like a middle school bully and that she, my wife, was also materialistic at that age but grew out of it on her own. She also said that I was asking for it by asking her what she meant. I told my wife that I was disappointed in her and I would be talking to my daughter alone when she comes home from school today. I plan on talking to my daughter today, both because I'm still offended and I really don't want her to say that to anyone else. I don't plan on punishing her, just having an honest conversation and seeing where it goes. Nonetheless, I'm partially wondering if I'm the asshole for escalating the situation since it's a one-off occurrence. Question was, am I the asking out for being offended that my daughter called me ugly? Okay, like we've said before, you can't be an asshole for feeling something. And this being offended is feeling something. It is what you do with it that could make you an asshole or not. But but in this case, this this stays along with this theme of if you don't communicate problems, 
people aren't aware of them and can't adjust accordingly. I think in this case, having a really solid conversation with your daughter, by the way, NTA, not the asshole for feeling that, not the asshole for wanting to talk to her about it either. Your wife is an asshole and we'll get there in a minute. In this instance, having a conversation with your daughter who's 15 and knows better is a great idea because she loves you. You're her dad. You love her and having a conversation about, hey, um, you don't want to hurt the people that you love. And if you do hurt the people that you love, you need to be aware of what happened so that you can avoid it next time because you don't want to harm this relationship. And if you treat people that you love this way, you will harm relationships. And knowing that it's important to you and that it hurts your feelings, it affected your feelings. You need to communicate that to her. Whether it works or not is TBD because you don't have a partner to back you up here. You don't have a partner to give you a unified front. My biggest fear in this whole situation is that you're going to go to bat here. You're going to try to explain it to your daughter. Your daughter's going to go talk to your wife and your wife's going to be like, don't take it seriously. He's just sensitive. Then you got a real problem. So wifey is another situation here that you're going to have to work on and try to try to figure out. And I don't know. I don't know what that play looks like, but I know you've got to do something there. And, and, you communicated your feelings to her. You communicated a problem to her. You tried to make her aware of it and told her the solution that you had planned out, which was talking to your daughter. The fact that she didn't back you up created another problem. You're going to have to develop another solution to that. She needs to take you seriously. And if you hurt her feelings, she would expect you to take her seriously. And maybe what you said here, where you said, if, if my daughter said something about my wife's appearance, she would be offended and she would expect me to back her up. Explain that to her. Flip it. See how she likes it then. See how she would respond differently and she'll minimize it when you do. But it will at least plant a seed for her to start thinking about. This may have to be a long play. I do think that talking to your daughter is a damn good idea. Because if she was willing to say that to you, whom she loves... And yes, is very comfortable with and probably filterless with. But if she was willing to say this to you, who's someone she loves, what is she willing to say to or about people that she doesn't give a shit about? All the strangers at school, all the kids that her group looks down on. You could have a much bigger problem than you realize here. And this conversation is going to be your peek into how big of a problem this actually is. And unfortunately, your wife is a part of this problem. And if it's a big problem that you discover with your daughter, your wife is a big part of this big problem. And it's going to get way more complicated. Yuck! Where does wife belong here? Wife could potentially be a one here. I think it's worth a second conversation to see where she truly lands and if she takes it seriously. And if you flip the script and say, how would you respond? If she doesn't come around after that statement, and if you find out this is a much bigger problem with your daughter, then wife could be ask on one. You could be discovering a whole mess of shit here. Daughter definitely should not have done this. Definitely shouldn't have done it. Again, OP, you're NTA. You can't be an asshole for feeling something. I don't believe you're an asshole for wanting to talk to her about it. Uh, and your wife is at least a two here for doing what she's done so far. I'm going to I'm gonna say she's a two right now. She's a two. She could potentially be a one. And you'll find out whenever you have that furthering conversation with her where you explain how this seriously bothered you. And whatever you discover from the conversation with your daughter, I think that needs to be presented in this conversation as well. I see how your wife would like it if the script was flipped and go from there. Then you'll, you'll know how big of a problem this is going to be. But you have to communicate something that actually bothered you. And this could be a real problem. It could be a real problem. Your, uh, your 15-year-old could be could already be at mean girl status in school and be looked at by everyone as a mean girl. You definitely don't want that. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one is titled, Am I the Askinaut for Throwing Away Food I Know My Girlfriend Wanted? I, 24 male, live with my 23 female girlfriend and recently threw away the leftovers of a meal I cooked because she said she wanted to try some. For a bit of background, when we moved in together, we agreed that we would each only cook for ourselves and use our own dishes. My idea. Okay. This is a 
Dude living there with his girlfriend, and already one sentence in, he's like, we're only going to cook for ourselves and use our own dishes. You don't touch my shit, I won't touch your shit. You don't eat my shit, I won't eat your shit. Man, kind of feeling like a relationship might just not be for you, bro. The issue is sometimes she will now ask if she can have a bite of the food I am cooking just to try it, or wants to eat some of the leftovers I cook, and then she offers to cook for both of us the next night. She claims that it's a ridiculous rule to have, and that I should grow out of the rule by now. Joey doesn't shift! food. On to the incident. I had made a stir fry and was finishing putting the leftovers in a container when she blatantly told me just to leave it out so she can have some. I of course said no and that I don't want her to eat what I cook and put it in the container and into the fridge and started to leave the kitchen. I went into the living room to grab my phone before going back to the kitchen to grab a drink when I saw my girlfriend pulling my food out of the fridge and taking the lid off. I went over to the counter and grabbed the container and dumped the food into the trash to prevent her from eating it. She stayed silent the whole time until finally calling me an asshole and storming off unless there is some neurodivergent reason for this this is unreasonable there could be a reasonable explanation i feel like if there was and if there was a reason that he had to do this and he may have he may have something and not even realize that he has something where he can't have anyone else touch his stuff or he loses his shit this could be this could be a deeper trigger here but sans that, this is not relationship conducive for sure. I don't really think I'm the asshole as we agreed to this arrangement before moving in. I knew it might be a problem, but some friends said it's time to move on from my weird obsession and just share the food already. So am I the astronaut? A few important things might be we don't share any food, even spices, and do not share any food costs. I've never once wanted to eat the food she makes or used her cooking ingredients. Okay, in a relationship, I'm just going to go and throw red flags on that one. I always let her go first when cooking in the kitchen. I don't cook for friends or family either. <sighs> they don't say how long they've lived together, which could be an issue here. He could have an like a true obsessive obsessive thing here. This could be a sensory thing. This could be a neurodivergent thing. He could have some reason for needing it to be this way, but if that's the case, then he needs to provide that context and tell her, like, no, you will actually do my mental state harm. And it will be hell here if this is the case. And if that's the case, though, I feel like it would probably apply to more than just food. I don't know. But sans that, because there's no none of that context provided here, um, a relationship is going to be really, really difficult if there are these clear boundaries. I wonder, they live together. Do they have separate bedrooms? If they live in the same bedroom, is there like a divide down the middle where it's like, this is my shit, you don't touch my shit, this is your shit, I don't touch your shit. And if so, that's, that's I mean, this is a roommate. This is not, this is not a romantic partner. This is not a relationship. This is a roommate, um, and and it's a, a very strict roommate. This is very difficult to. It'd be very difficult to have a relationship with someone like this. This would be tough. Dishes too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's dishes too. And she, yeah, she offered to cook for him the next night. Like there, there was no. Here, here's one of the tough things about about having some kind of policy like this like yes it's going to be it's going to be tough to live with a person who who treats things like this it's also so rigid and there's no flexibility with it whatsoever that what else is going to become this rigid and to have a relationship with someone when everything is rigid and black and white and there is no finessing of anything there is no what's the word i'm looking for I don't know. Words are hard. It would be a really, it'd be a really tough thing to do. So <laughs> am I the astronaut for throwing away food? I know my girlfriend wanted. Yeah. Sans any kind of, of explanation that makes it make sense. Yes. For just doing this. Yes. Now she did agree to it ahead of time, whether she knew it was this serious or, or that it was real or not is, is debatable, but she did agree to it ahead of time. She wanted to try it. It wasn't going to cause him any harm or he wouldn't have the bite that she took out of the container. He didn't want her, her cooties to infect his face. Food. If you're in a relationship with her, you've already got her cooties, man. I don't know what the issue is there, but to throw it away in front of her to prevent her to prevent her from being able to eat it is petty as f, and is a shitty thing to do. You at least get a two for this. It might be a one if this bleeds over to other areas of life, and there is no real reason for it. This is, yeah. It might be a, a, a life of solitude. Maybe what you want, man. If if you want things in your own specific order and you don't want people to mess with that stuff, sometimes the best way to accomplish that is to have a space that is truly your own, that you don't have to share with someone else. And even then, the outside world is always going to mess with your system, and that's going to be difficult. But having a relationship with someone is going to be very, very difficult for you.
I don't know. That would be really tough. What happens when he travels? Like you bring everything with him. This would be very difficult, but it's rigid. That's the, that's the hard part is that having, having these very, very rigid systems that you want someone else from the world to just align to and accept perfectly is tough. That's going to be tough. If it was the reverse and she had some kind of very rigid system that she was petty about, he'd be here asking if she was the asshole for doing some petty shit. And she probably would be. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder once again with another Reddit story for you. This one is, am I the astronaut for saying I would never have chosen my husband as the father of my child? Damn. Right off the rip. I, 37 female, and my husband Liam, 30 male, have two children. I'm currently pregnant with our third and last. Liam is a wonderful husband and a fantastic father. I was out at brunch with a few friends of mine. I was telling them a funny story about my cravings and how Liam had made a cake from scratch for it. A friend of mine, Paige, said that I chose well and that she should have put as much thought as I did into choosing him. I have a reputation for being really thorough and thinking things out before doing anything. The responsible one. I told her that I never would have chosen Liam to be the father of our first child, but I'm so grateful he was. I was very lucky. Our pre-marriage life was messy. I was with another man, Dave. Dave was a steady, reliable man, and we had been together for years. Dave made a new friend, who was Liam, and I could not help but absolutely hate him. According to him, Liam made Dave feel young again, and he was desperate to reclaim the sense of youth he lost by being responsible since he was young. He spent all of his time with Liam and other bros. Dave would spend every night out partying until 2 or 3 a.m. He spent his entire paycheck and some of my paychecks on wrestling videos and online gambling. He bought a motorcycle. He used our savings to buy crypto. He shaved his head bald. The last draw was him spending $20,000 of my savings to travel. Throughout this, Liam was incredibly disrespectful to me. Dave broke up with me when I asked him to stop hanging out with Liam and his other friends. He immediately moved in with a girl I had concerns about. I felt deeply hurt, and for the first time in my life, I felt like hurting someone in return. I was miserable, out of my mind, and I called Liam over. I wanted to ruin their friendship like he ruined my relationship. He was annoyed at Dave for something else and was down for anything. I woke up the next morning realizing that I made a huge mistake, but it was incredible. Unfortunately, my bad decision caught up to me and I got pregnant. Ironic since I had always wanted children, but I was told I was infertile. Both Liam and I were against children out of wedlock and we had a small wedding. I was ready to grit my teeth and make the best of our marriage, but surprisingly, Liam turned out to be an incredible partner and father. If it was a mistake, it was the best mistake of my life. Paige was very offended that I said Liam wouldn't have been my choice initially. She said I was making myself superior. She said that she lost respect for me and would never talk to me again. She also messaged Liam to tell him what I said. Was what I said really? that bad? I should probably be clear, but I'm a lot more unfiltered on Reddit than here. I just said that while we knew each other before, Liam was basically a one night thing, which is true. My other friends know the truth because a few of them were there until it all unfolded. Dave was furious at first, which is understandable, but we are cordial to each other. I did not get my money back, unfortunately. Okay. Paige is the, uh, the friend that got offended from the beginning of the story. So Paige, uh, they were out at a lunch, a brunch, and uh, Opie was telling a funny story about the cravings and how Liam made a cake. And Paige said that she chose well, and she said she never would have chosen him to be the father of the first. So here's the the, the context here is no, you're not you're not the asshole for saying this because it's the context of where you were in life at the time. Who I was in life at that time, I would not have chosen him to be the father of, her, of our first child. Knowing what you know now, he's amazing, right? It all worked out for the very, very best. And you know what? It sounds like Liam would say the same thing and be like, oh yeah, that was that was a terrible choice. He probably wouldn't disagree with it at all. Hopefully you guys have that understanding and can look at that, but providing Paige with the context of, of this story makes me think that you're not the asshole because at that time in life, you wouldn't have chose him to father a child. You chose him for a one night thing and to and to get back at, at, uh, at your ex, which, you know, is arguably definitely a risky move. I mean, it, it was, it turned into a risky thing for you, but it just happened to work out. But, but that was obviously big time petty. Um, and, uh, your beliefs that led you to go ahead and get married just happened to work out for so many people. It doesn't. You, you truly got lucky in that way. But as long as you follow this up with, with you're very lucky, it's just not the choice that you would have made in the beginning. 
it's where you were in life. There's context to it. It's reality. She wants you to lie about it. Liam knows. I'm sure Liam knows. He knows the story and it all just happened to work out great. So great. Good for you. Doesn't mean you don't love him. It means at that time in life, he's not the one you would have picked and you already hated him. Yeah. Okay. This makes sense though. Her being, her being butthurt that, uh, that OP has like an amazing husband here who does all kinds of shit and is a great dad and a great partner. Um, and she said that's not who she would have chose then. She's immediately just like, oh, well, you have something better than I have. And you didn't even, you said it was a bad choice. Like, that's shit. I'm going to message him. Boop, boop, beep, pop, 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 pop. What do you think is going to come from that page? You think he's going to be like, oh, I'll be great to you now instead. No, that's not what's going to happen. You're just going to end up alienating a friend, burning a bridge because you got butthurt about something that was none of your damn business. Page, page may have a thing for Liam. And again, I think people who see people who are happier than them immediately want to cause them pain because, as you say, misery loves company. And it's easy to hate people who um, who have what you want. 